But let's get to the obvious uh, massive news uh, in the boxing world that is definitely breaking the Twitter sphere, so to speak, right? Breaking the social media sphere of boxing. Uh, UCAD and Dylan White uh, have issued a joint statement, and they have cleared Dylan White of any wrongdoing, so to speak. And let's just read like the the sort of the summary of the case, uh, and then I'll give you guys all of my thoughts, so to speak. Um, oh, PSK, I will do the weigh-in review. Yes, I will talk about how Andy Ruiz. I forgot to mention that in the preview. Yes, I'll definitely do that. But digressing back to this. Uh, in respect to uh, Mr. White's drug test uh, testing results, the following points are relevant. Point one, there is nothing in Mr. White's longitudinal uh, u- uh, urinary profile to, to suggest that he has used steroids. The levels of metabolites found in Mr. White's uh, 20 June uh, 2019 sample were extremely low. Mr. White has provided a urine sample to VADA on the 17th of June 2019, three days before his uh June, uh, June 20th, uh, 2019 sample, which was tested by a WADA accredited laboratory uh, and which returned a negative result, including uh, for the metabolites in question. Ms. Wright provided several other doping control samples to UCAD and VADA between uh, June 20th and July 20th, of 2019, i.e. the date of his fight with Oscar Rivas, all of which also tested negative. In light of the above points, the trace amounts of metabolites found in the uh, 20th of June uh, 2019 sample are consistent with an isolated contamination event, and they are not suggestive of doping. Having rigorously scrutinized and investigated the details and factual and scientific uh, evidence provided by Dylan White, I think that's an interesting way of framing it, UCAD is satisfied that the presence of a very low amount of metabolites on his uh, 20th June 2019 sample was not caused by any fault, negligence, or wrongdoing on Mr. White's part. Uh... And given the circumstances, could not have affected the fight between Mr. White and Mr. Rebus. Blah, blah, blah. A lot more to it, but that's the gist of it. A lot more legally, so to speak. But I will point you guys in several directions here. Um, not not t- not all of this can be super informative or conclusive to this case, but just a lot of documentation that I want to give to you guys. The first two in the live chat. And when I clip out the show, there will also be in the description are from WADA. A few other ones just speaking about the nature of uh, Half-Life and the nature of detection window, so to speak, for uh, Durenaball, the alleged substance that Dylan White was uh, alleged to have taken, so to speak, right? The metabolites in the system. Per Thomas Hauser and his reporting, all were by way of this system or this substance, Danabol, or by the more common name or generic name. Uh, I'm probably going to butcher this, guys. Metandianine, I believe is how you pronounce that. Uh, and the gist of it is I want to get to because there's one point I want to make that I think I I want information about before I really. Uh, you know, form a complete opinion about Dylan White's case. Uh, the detection window for metabolites is up to three days, and a recently discovered hydromethyl metabolite is found in the urine for up to 19 days after a single 5 milligram oral dose. Um, and all the information can be found here in textbooks and online scholarly information that all of you guys can... Uh, get to and again i know these are links that you guys don't maybe want to read but it's informational and i've i've read them all and i implore all of you guys to read them as well because i'm not going to be able to say everything that's in them or remember that everything that's in them just being honest like i'm not educated enough to you know recite everything but there are probably some people here that are very educated that are very smart that listen to the show that i assume want to read this stuff and because this show, I think, is a show that promotes more of a substantive conversation and, and, and dialogue about topics in boxing, be educated. Like, go read up on on subjects about this and and then come back and have a conversation about it because I think it would just be better for all of you guys. Um, <laughs> I think Dylan White, if... He was tested 
within three days or within, let's say, even four or five days, right? Especially if it's a, we don't know the exact metabolite he popped for. We don't know the exact substance he popped for. It's all legend still. Because uh, most of the metabolites for Danibal are within those three-day windows. So if he, let's say, has a VADA test three days after the June 20th test, then his, clay, his case is pretty much in line with the contamination case. And contamination is an issue in PD regulation that I've been very adamant about that we need to be more lenient on. However, we don't know that information. We know the test before. We know three days before the positive test for Dianabol, alleged uh, Dianabol substance metabolite, that he, he tested negative. We don't know afterwards what the time window is for those tests. That, to me, is interesting, and I want to know that. Also, UCAD has not released what his levels were, and I find that interesting. While there aren't necessarily uh, threshold levels for Danibal per WADA, there is what's called an M MARP, I believe is what the acronym for it, and that's what they test for. So that's why I'm curious. You know, it's not as it's not a detection. Uh, I forget the exact acronym, but it's not the. For example, like marijuana has certain thresholds. I think it's like last time I checked, it was like 750 milligrams uh, or something like that in your system, and that's the threshold for weed. You can pop for all of that, and you're fine. Danibol, from my understanding, doesn't really have that, and on top of it, from the. MARP is a very small window, so I'm very curious, not window, a very small uh, number, so I'm very curious what they pot for, what or what white pot for, what that number is. I need that information to make a real conclusive opinion about this, to be honest. Because this case is, in four months' time, reviewed and finished. From UCAD's own statements... They only review the scientific data that, obviously, Dylan White presented. There didn't seem to be a real counter-argument there on their side at all. And seemingly none of the supplements that he has taken were tested. There was no attempt to find the root cause of the contamination. And he was cleared 24 hours before his fight, when he didn't need to be. That to me is just weird. It's just odd. Like, I, I wish we had more information. And from the very beginning, I've always said that Dylan White's case is not about Dylan White. I want to make that very clear. That you guys in the chat that are talking about Dylan White, Dylan White being cleared, I don't care about Dylan White. I've always been very adamant I don't care about Dylan White. And you guys should know this, that I've listened for a very long time. That UCAD's inconsistency... And overall, WADA's signatories being inconsistent with their application of WADA code is frustrating. And that, to me, is an issue. That there is a seeming inconsistency in punishment, in expediting uh, of review processes, and this goes not just for you, it goes for other WADA signatories. And this issue is one that is frustrating. And on top of it, for more a UCAT specific issue, again, sort of the talks I brought up, the lack of transparency to me is concerning. And I, I don't understand how people could be accepting of an institution like this that is automatically non-transparent to the consumer. And in a sense, fighters as well. Because Oscar Rivas wasn't even notified about this. You know what I mean? Like it's, maybe it's great for Dylan White's in, in terms of his privacy and everything, but there has to be a balance for his opponent, maybe the, the consumers as well. Because this type of information should be transparent. Especially if you're cleared. I don't know why there isn't a release of the data for his, his testing results. That, to me, would easily 
shut everyone up. If we could just look at the data and say, oh, that's in line with water code, water, it's in line with everything. There we go, we're done here. And you guys know me. I, I've been a big advocate for fighters not getting thrown uh, to the wolves, so to speak, for a inconsistent, inadequate regulatory body. A la Canelo, a la uh, Julio Cesar Martinez and Ray Vargas just a, a while ago, that there is that we have a a a a PD regulatory system that is that's ultimately unjust at times, and that to me is the ultimate issue. Don't why I think. Probably he's he might be in the right here again. I want to know more. Uh, I hit up Dave Marzen of uh, Biolock MMA, really good expert on this topic. Uh, you know, a true academic in this field. I'm not, and he said to the effect that basically what almost you had said that as long as those tests that are right next to it are negative, then he should be fine. It's in line with the contamination, but he did ultimately said to me that the inconsistencies of WADA is, and obviously UCAB being a WADA signatory under that branch, is frustrating. And again, if we had more information, this all goes away. If we knew, if we know that he had a VADA test three days before the test that he popped for, he had a VADA test a day after, both were negative, and his levels were below two nan nanograms per, per milliliter. And it's like, okay, then he's probably he's most likely contaminated. And in this day and age where a strict um, strict liability pol policy is sort of being worn down, for those who don't know what that means, when WADA was first formed in 1999, it was off of the basis of a strict liability po pro uh, policy. That no matter what you pop for, whether it's in your system for supplement, whatever it is, you're ultimately responsible for it, and it's on you. We have Jeff Nowitzki of USADA and the UFC program recently come out and say, like, the, the strict, uh, uh, strict liability policy needs to be sort of thrown out in a sense. WADA's recent uh, amendments to their code have really increased thresholds for a numerous amount, have increased uh, sort of contamination rulings and the scope of them, so to speak, for water signatories. So again, Dylan White's case is not ultimately a one where I'm thinking that he is in the wrong, that I think he needs to be crucified. I don't think that at all. I think Dylan White's probably fine to fight again. And I've been sort of the same mindset of even guys that are way more egregious popping, like Gerald Miller. Like, I I don't care. I care about you, CAD, not being transparent. I care about how we have multiple water signatories that don't act the same, don't enforce WADA code the same, and therefore you have a disparity of, of, of sort of execution of WADA code. That is the issue. Um, but digressing. I mean, guys in the chat, you guys don't want me to talk about this. That's fine. You guys are tuning in, though, Metal Box. I see you upset that I'm talking about Dylan White in, in this case at all. But it's all right, guys. It's all right. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Anything else in particular? Yo, me Metal Box. I mean, I, I don't understand what your issue is. Call in. Dude, like, I, 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 please call in. Skype Mixed Combat Radio, please. What's your issue? Like, you don't want me to give my opinion about Dylan White's case, but you're, you're listening to my show to hear me give my opinion about his case. It's the title of the fucking show. Like, this is weird. Like, some of you guys in the chat, odd people, guys. Odd people. Fighting talk is better. better. Uh, dude, we, we've done like five shows this week, breaking down tons of fights. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I truly don't. Uh, moving on. <laughs>